Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for our national anthem. Good morning, everyone. A happy Sunday. Naomi Tucker here, joined by Timmy T. Timmy it's been T. a while. Uh, back in the house. Back in the house. I'll be out of the house next week, but then after that, uh, things are good to go. I'll be here on a more consistent basis. Yeah, I'm so glad to have you with me here. And like I said, we, we've had you on in the afternoon, but this is the first time in a while that we we're on together for the morning show. Exciting. I get a good half an hour to sit here with you, Naomi. It's not a bad deal on a Sunday morning, so uh, let's get to it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's look ahead first before we dive into this eight race card. Frank J. De Francis Memorial Dash Day coming up in less than a week. Loaded card, full stakes races, the Polynesian, the Twix, uh, the Weather Vane, and of course, headlined by that great three sprint race. And I was just catching up on some of the horses that might be lining up in there. And I uh, wonder where Craig is, stakes winner, trained by uh, Brittany Russell, most likely will be seen in that event. I'm still hoping to see a uh, possible veteran sprinter Lakai in there as well. So certainly a weekend to look forward to. Always a weekend to look forward to. It's a big weekend uh, here at Laurel Park, the Francis Dash. Always a great race, and the undercard races usually are very, very good, too. So uh, looking forward to that. I will be watching it from the comforts of my home next week. Uh, however, I will be watching. Oh, hopefully I can hold the fort here uh, without you. I, but I have uh, all the faith in the world. <laughs> I have all the faith in the world. Not, not even, I haven't even given it a second thought. Oh, good, good to hear your confidence. Uh, let's also have a look at what's coming up in terms of uh, one of our charity events. Canter for a cause in aid of the Thoroughbred Aftercare Alliance, allowing you to have a spin around that historic Pimlico course on your pony or your ex Thoroughbred. Now, Tim, you were telling me that you used to outride this event. Now, I'm curious how, how this used to go. It, 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 well, <laughs> there were some hairy moments. For the most part, it's pretty good. We have, usually have four outriders out there and four or five just spotters on the mm -hmm. ground. And uh, it goes really well. The kids have a blast. I mean, when you're a kid and you have a pony, what do you want to do? Go fast. I mean, you might right. uh, you, and go fa fast on a racetrack if you're capable of doing it. Uh, why not? And, you, know, you get the occasional retired racehorse has been reschooled and and they get back on the racetrack and they 
they have um, uh, you know moments of their former glory come into their brain and they, uh, they might get a little aggressive and you, you might have to help those people out but for the most part it goes really really well it's super super fun it's super fun to be out there i'm going to miss not out riding out there but maybe i'll be up there spotting uh instead i'm going to try and have a look as well that is on sunday the 10th of october this year and i was kind of reading up they have different groups as well yes. the sea biscuit secretariat war admiral ben's cat all related to how fast you would like to go. So I guess a group in terms of experience, really promising uh, day, inviting everyone to come along and hopefully have a spin. And otherwise, I think as a spectator, uh, plenty to behold as well. Just a, just a fun event coming up. It, it's a fun event and the parents come and the grandparents come and it's just fun all, all the way around. And, and the kids just have a blast. Absolutely, looking forward to it. Let's dive into what's going on at Laurel Park today. Track conditions as seen there. We're on a fast main track, a firm turf course. Absolutely just ideal racing conditions that we've had over the last couple of days. We've truly been blessed during this uh, opening weekend of the fall meet. It, we certainly have. The weather's been perfect. The temperatures have been perfect and not too hot. Just nice fall weather, what we like getting here in Maryland. And you know, Maryland's a funny state, as you know. We don't get a whole <laughs> lot of spring and we don't get a whole lot of fall. It, it seems to go from spring to uh, winter to sp uh, summer and then fall to winter. Uh, but we're getting some really, really nice days right now. So it's fun. And, and the horses love it. Horses love running in this type of weather. Exactly. Just that kind of perfect mild conditions for them and uh, really, really enjoying it. So definitely making the most of it and do invite everyone to come and join us here on a course for this eight race card. Let's get going. Race number one kicks off that early pig five sequence. And Tim, you decided to come up with a ticket today. No pressure. Hoping that it's going to hit. I did a forty dollar and fifty cent ticket, and I go three deep in race two using the two, the three, and the five. In excuse me, in race one, the two, the three, and the five, the two green eyes. My topic. We're going to take a look at that horse in a minute. Race two, I use a two, three, and four. In race uh, three, I single on my uh, best bet of the day, Taurus Del uh, Del Payne for Hugh McMahon. Make the rider Javion Toledo there. That's my single. Race four, three deep, three seven. 7, 10, and race 5, I go 3 deep again using the 2, 5, and 10, $40 and 50 cent ticket on the early pick 5. Yeah, starting right here in that first race on every single live racing day at Laurel Park again. I keep wanting to say Pimlico. We we're about four days in now. I need, I, I'm getting over that, but hey, it's, it's wonderful to be back. It's though. hard. After working all winter at Laurel, then we go to Pimlico. I said Laurel. 30 times, uh, every bit of 30 times when we got back at the Pimlico. But I had most of the summer off, so I don't have Pimlico on, on my brain. Uh, so I'm in a little bit of an advantage. Look, it's such a gorgeous track. It's tough to get it out of your mind. Oh, but really, it. really enjoyed the action thus far on this brand new main track here at Laurel. And the feedback has been good. But let's dive into this first race. Phillies and Mares, three-year-old and up. Five and a half furlongs on the turf, claiming 16 to 12 and a half thousand. Normal is of two lifetime. And Tim, well, we see this similarly using the same three horses in our top three. We'll start with your top pick, Green Eyes. Let's look back at her. Her last outing, that was on a yielding turf course at Pimlico. Slightly slow beginning from an outside draw. Uh, she was kind of used to get up there. Uh, I do believe we have a video from that start as well. If you can pull that up, the number two green eyes. Uh, I do believe that was in this race, but I, I just heard that we can't play that right now. So we'll just talk everyone we'll just through talk it, right? About it. Yeah. There you go. Slightly Let's slow beginning. She was definitely used to, to get into that turn and, and to get into contention. Uh, no bad about that, but to all three of her starts, here we go. We do have the video, and she's on the uh, outside there, and she just gets away with her head up a little bit, and she breaks last at the end of the day. And you see her once again broke with her head up in the air, doesn't level off to a good 70, 80 yards into the race. And when she does, I mean, she moves up there rather quickly on the, on the outside. Uh, she's not really rushed. She does it pretty much on her own. But she gets up in good position. She turns for home. And look, she gives it every shot to win here uh, th that particular afternoon. She just comes up short uh, with, uh, with a horse uh, on the inside. And look, 
when they get used a little bit more early, as you know, they just don't have that punch that they might have if they were able to run uh, with the pace from the beginning and she gets out run to the wire. But I thought that was a really, really good effort. All three of her races on the turf have been strong efforts. And look, her speed figures work here. Yep, uh, they're they good do. enough to get the job done. So I have uh, green eyes on top. She's three to one. I on think she's going to get a way better setup here with I that I lower draw. If she, if she just breaks with that speed that she's shown, at least she doesn't have to come over like she did. Uh, right, and you know she doesn't she doesn't show a history of not getting away well. She just made it, she was last one in the gate. Maybe she wasn't quite prepared for the start that particular afternoon. But she doesn't have a a history of getting away poorly. So I agree with you. A little bit uh, lower draw and it could make all the difference for green. Nice. Well, to be honest, I didn't think that she jumped that badly at all. It was just that there were a couple on their inside that were faster, and she had that outside draw. Right. So she, they, you know, they had to use her to get that position. Now I use the number three on top, Sassy Bay for trainer Cahill Lynch, Charlie Marquez. The Lynch Marquez combo is is kind of hard Potent. not to use at this uh, at this present. And uh, her grass debut was absolutely terrific, just sitting behind the pace and then taking over. When you factor in the possible pr progression, she's only ran twice. I think she might might just be the better horse than Green Eyes, but they're very closely matched. They're very closely matched. I mean, Sassy Babe's going to be taking on winners for the first time, but you're absolutely right. The way she ran that first race on the grass at Delaware Park, it, boy, is that the way you want to see a, 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 a horse run? Just laid right off the pace, yes. three lengths mm -hmm. out of it, came with a good sustained rally, got the job done. Now she gets an extra half for her long this afternoon, which I think is going to help her also, of course, you know, Cal Lynch, Charlie Marquez, as you mentioned, but she clearly likes the grass. That was a good, strong speed figure uh, in that maiden event at Delaware Park. Yeah, quite the improvement. So I'm hoping that she keeps ascending like she did. Now, perhaps a bit of an unknown is Fudge Cake on the outside, the 11. Both of us uh, use her underneath for trainer Dale Capuano, who's very good uh, moving horses from the dirt to the turf if he, if he feels it fit. But a bit of an unknown because she did win on debut, but that was at Timonium. Do love the fact that, of course, Timonium is a tight track. Carrying that speed can be tricky. So we know she's fast early. We know she's fast early. And, you know, she went 23 and change up there. But that's at Timonium. That's not, uh, you know, that's uh, still moving right along. But she did get the job done first time out of the box. She's by band box. She's out of an English Channel mare. Uh, that perks my eyes up. It should appreciate the turf. She may even get a little bit better. Will it be good enough? Uh, we'll find out because she did break her maiden on the on the main track at Timonium for a maiden nickel. Uh, it doesn't get a whole lot easier than that. She's going to have to step it up. Will the pedigree be enough to uh, step it up? Uh, step it up that much that uh, she can be competitive with that, this group? Uh, we'll soon find out. But she should appreciate getting on the weeds. Yeah, race number two, nickel claiming events, seven furlongs, the distance here. And Tim, we'll start with your top selection, which is the number four, Jack Bow for trainer Ben Feliciano, Angel Cruz. It's a bit of a steep drop. I, I'm uh, slightly worried with this horse coming down from that optional claimer starter allowance. And also, we haven't seen him since the 16th of July. Uh, I wonder if he's going to turn up like the horse that he's shown to be in the past. I think he will. Okay. I think he will. As my girls would say, Dad, that race on the 16th of uh, July uh, on the turf uh, against those type of horses was a total fail. It didn't work. Wait, that's but what your girls would tell you? Yeah, that's it. that was a total <laughs> fail, Dad. I mean, that just simply didn't work. And it simply didn't work. But now we drop down to the 5,000. And uh, you look, and he's got some strong races sprinting on the main track against Tougher. But look, he won uh, the beaten 10,000. Now he's in for the nickel. That makes sense. He came back and he won another time for the 14,000, uh, beaten 14,000 up there at Penn National. This spot should work for him. He wins whether it's fast. Whether it's sloppy, this uh, this level, he should be very, very tough under Angel Cruz. Yeah, but from you were a trainer before. From a trainer's point of view, why wouldn't you put him in at the same level, the claiming twelve and a half to ten this time? Why drop to this level? We won the ten thousand dollar beaten beaten race. So uh, those beaten races at any uh, any level, even ten thousand, uh, non winners of uh, non winners of the day or non winners of three or four. It's still, you're running out of conditions. Get down here yeah. to try to take the win. And uh, I, th I think this is the right move for him. Uh, you know, you're not going to come back in the starter uh, 25000 or anything like that. And, uh, you know, the pots are good enough. The purses are good enough. Uh, get the win and keep moving forward. This is a horse that knows how to win. I mean, he's won yeah. five from 20 races, a couple seconds and a couple thirds, just under $100,000. $100, so I, I, I personally think this is the right move.
Yeah, well, I, I use him in second because clearly he seems to be the horse to beat in this spot. But Eamon Corner has been ultra consistent in his last four at this level. He's just been very, very sharp. So I wanted to try and see if I got a little bit more value. Well, look, he ran a big race at Timonium, and he came from pretty far back. That's not always the easiest thing to do. That's a very short stretch. It's only an eighth of a mile from the top of the stretch uh, to the wire, and he came with a closing finish. You look at his three previous races all at Pimlico uh, where he does get outrun, and he closed closes he except for that race four starts ago uh, he got the job done there but then a couple of those next races for the 5,000 just couldn't get up he's going to be coming late I like him uh, he's I have him on my ticket uh, but he will be coming late and he's coming off a big race in fact uh, close to a lifetime best at mm -hmm. that race uh, at Timonium in his last start yeah, race number three, claiming 16 to 12 and a half, beating Mao on the turf. And uh, both you and I use similar horses, just a slightly bit different uh, configuration. But we'll start with your, what was it, your best bet, your single? This is my best bet. This, this is, is my single. Your I, day I, is hinging around Taurus Del Payne. My day is hinging around Dor uh, Taurus Del Payne. A horse that's in pretty good form. I think we have a video of we this do. one from his last start, August 23rd at uh, Colonial. And uh, this is a horse that uh, is right in the thick of things all the way down there. He's trying to get there. He doesn't switch his leads. He just switched it there. And he, he keeps coming. He keeps, he keeps trying. He just uh, can't get up this afternoon. But I think this is a horse that's on a bit of an improve. That was a lifetime best race, 78 by our speed figure that particular afternoon. He's 8 for 11 in the money, on the grass, uh, with uh, two wins. So he always shows up, and I think he can show up uh, with a good race this afternoon uh, at back at this level. He comes right back at the same level, and he's getting Javion Toledo, make the rider Javion Toledo this afternoon. And also, uh, if you look at the horse that beat him that day, Markatov, he came back to run at Arlington, Arlington Park against much tougher and just missed by a nose that day, really franking uh, Torres Del Payne's form. But, uh, like, it seems to be a theme for me today. I'm trying to beat these horses that seems to be the class in the field. I'm coming with a horse that, you know, uh, four to one, I'm hoping to get more. Maryland Pride, Angel Cruz, the number eight for Mikey Giralis, 445 days layoff. Now, the Giralis one can get a horse to win off such a layoff. Uh, he's capable of besting this field with some of his earlier performances. And he's been working again since June at Timonium and Laurel Park. Now, of course, I, I'm going to have a look at this horse in the paddock. Do I think he's ready? Is he looking sharp? Is he looking soft? Taking a bit of a risk here. But, uh, you know, I, I feel like your horse is the horse to beat. I'm trying to do so. Right. He gets Angel Cruz this afternoon. Make the rider Angel Cruz on Maryland, Maryland Pride. But look, like Ian mentioned, the 15-month layoff, he's dropping to the $16,000 level, yep. which seems to be the, uh, the lowest level he's ever run. He's a seven-year-old who's only run 22 times in his whole life. So he's had some bumps in the road. There's no, part about, uh, no uh, doubt about that. However, he's run well off of a layoff. He seems to be working well here at Laurel Park. His last two works, 48 and 1, half a mile. Then he came back with a good 101 and 1, going 5 eighths of a mile on this 3rd of September. So, look, he's, the figures are there. Yep. Uh, they, there's, uh, there's no doubt about that. The question is simply, can he come back? off of this 15 months and uh, deliver the same type of race. I like him, but he's going to have to deliver the same type of race to get well, the job done. Yeah, it, it is a question mark. It's I'm, I'm trying question. to see if he can do it, but certainly a big question mark. Your horse seems to be a more reliable sort. Hence, uh, I have him in my exactum. I just want to box the two. Uh, of course, race number three also kicks off the Rainbow Pick 6. I do believe Cali will have a ticket later on this afternoon for you to play because it didn't go out yesterday. We'd have 43 live tickets, uh, but of course, no singles here. So we'll have something to go on. Race number four, maiden claimers, Phillies and three, four, and five-year-old, six furlong the distance there. And Tim, you and I both go with the first-time starter. Five to one morning yeah. line. I am taking that any day at this level for a firster. No chance. This one goes off as a favorite. I can't imagine this one doesn't I, go off yep. as a favorite. I really yep. can't. I mean, when I looked at this race, <laughs> for me, this was the only place I could go mm -hmm. uh, in this race. I mean, uh, Mikey Duralis, he wins at 38%. Uh, and this isn't a stellar bunch. I mean, we don't have to uh, sugarcoat. It's not a stellar bunch. But look at some of these works this horse is coming in with. 102 and change from the gate on the 19th yes. of August. At this level, that is plenty good enough. He follows that up Agreed. with a half from the pole, 48-1. Uh, you know, this horse only has to be able to run a little bit 
uh, to win this this race, and I think he probably can, uh, as you did. I'm going to take Tor Torch Carrier, first-time starter. Yeah, I really don't see past him at all in here. Also, yeah. Uncle Lino, 27% winners with all their first-time starters. So the Sire can clearly Sire one that hits first time out of the box. And then there was only one other runner today for the Dam Freedom's Flame. That's Girl Next Door. She also won on debut. That was sprinting at Maiden 25 level on the main track. So everything is pointing in the direction of Torch Carrier. Here. Now, both of us use the uh, number 10 underneath. Notion Interrupters, Marius Ray Jr., yeah. Grant Whittaker. I mean, he showed inter she showed interest, excuse me, two starts ago. Uh, she's always just a little bit sluggish off, yeah. though, which is not one of your favorite things, no, is it? No, it's not one of my favorite things. It hasn't gotten away well in uh, three consecutive starts coming into today. You know... The results haven't been good, but the numbers have been a little bit better. She tried mm -hmm. the 10,000 Timonium last time. That's a two-turn sprint, and she didn't get away well. Now you've got to negotiate two turns. It uh, would make it a little bit tougher for her, but this will be her second time at this maiden 10 level. Maybe if she can just get away decently, uh, it uh, puts her in with a chance. Yeah, I definitely feel like this is all about the first time starter. But both of us use the 3, 10, 6, 7. Use the 3, 10, 7, 1 in this field. We'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. When it comes to getting back in the game, there's only one team to turn to. The team more high school, collegiate, and professional athletes train and recover with. That team is MedStar Sports Medicine. For more than 30 years, MedStar has served as a leader in the diagnosis, treatment, and rehabilitation of orthopedic and sports-related injuries. Ranked among the top programs in the Maryland and Washington regions, we offer rapid access to athletes of all levels. Let the pros who treat the pros treat you. MedStar Sports Medicine. Welcome back to Laurel Park. Naomi Tucker, Tim Tullock here. Eight races on this gorgeous Sunday. I invite you all to come and join us for a very sort of casual, laid-back day. Maybe make some money on the ponies. We're on race number five. Maiden claimers, 16 to 12 and a half. One mile on the turf. And uh, we'll start with a horse that we have a video spotlight on as well. The number two one most wanted. But before that, of course, uh, I also had a, a late pick four ticket that starts in this race. Let's see how I play it. You can see I actually go quite deep here. I'm trying to see if I can get a price. So two, five, 10, 11, race number five. Same deal in race number six, two, five, six, seven. Just really want to get a price because then everything hinges on my, my girl who I'm hoping is going to prove me right she was supposed to run yesterday scratch to find an easier field here i think she's a better horse in that field race eight are closer two six and ten for that maiden 45 and a half furlongs on the turf because quite honestly i don't want to end the day and the sequence on a single because that is always nerve wracking so two six ten in that final leg 24 dollars flat as we'll move along with race number five here and we'll talk about one most wanted right now for trainer damon de vico charlie marquette has a Two starts ago, this gelding went uh, a mile and an eighth here at Pimlico. We do have a look at that. That was at the maiden 16 level. And we, we see him uh, come along uh, in front of us for the first time because they go uh, twice. And, well, Tim, really yeah. didn't have fun there going into that turn. No, didn't have fun Oof. through the whole turn. Got in trouble here. Continues to get in trouble all the way through the turn. I mean, this is looking at my kids in a candy store here. Uh, continues. Uh, to get in trouble there. We're checking again. Now we split to the outside, and now he has to make a little bit of a rush just to come into contention, which he does going down the backside. But as we saw earlier with the video replays, when you have to use a horse like this uh, that early just to get into contention, you see he's riding him hard right now on the outside, the nine. And, uh, you know, he's making up some ground, but guess what? That, that, uh, that money's been spent, and there was nothing left for him to finish with uh, in the stretch, as you're going to see, just kind of levels out and ends up uh, finishing fourth that day. But, uh, uh, excuse me, fourth, but getting beat five lengths. And, he, you know, he tried. I mean, he tried. He's coming with a run there. Yeah, he's coming over the run, but now he starts to, uh, now it starts the monkey. As we said in cross country, the monkey jumped on his back uh, <laughs> right there, and it, it, it was over. But, look. This is a horse who's run some good races on the turf. Uh, two races before that at Tampa and Monmouth. Those were good, solid races with good, solid numbers. At this $16,000 level, gets back on the main track today. He ran a, a fourth on the off track uh, on the uh, main track on the main track in his last start. Tossed gets back that on the out. turf today. Gets back on the turf today. I think that makes all the difference. And he picks up Charlie Marquez. 
who was leading rider at Pimlico and he's definitely made a good start to the four meet here. And aside from you mentioned the trouble, I kind of looked at it from a pace point of view well. You had two runaway leaders. You had a group that really wasn't going anywhere. And if one most wanted would have been allowed to gradually close that gap to the leaders, he might have actually been able to collar them. The fact that you're then taking back slow, 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 have to try and sprint to get yep. to those leaders, that didn't work in his favor at all. So even aside from the being steadied and the trouble and everything he had to overcome, yep. that was just a complete race that did not go his way. So hopefully right. today will go better. I have but a bit of an angle on the 11, though, but... Yeah, I mean, there's some horses that have two or three runs in them, but th they're really good horses. <laughs> Most horses have one run in them, and, and uh, you don't typically get a, another one run out of them. And he had to use that horse early and just didn't have another run left in him. Yeah, I have him in my exact. I come with a bit of an angle on House Impeachment, the 11, Grace Rebecca Labar, Michael Trombetta. This is a now three-year-old. We haven't seen this horse since his two-year-old campaign. So uh, hopefully that means there is a little bit of natural progression going on there. Yes, a lengthy break, but Michael Trombetta has been known to be capable of getting horses to win off those type of layoff. But last time going along on the turf, he was at maiden 40 level. So Quite a steep drop in terms of the class. And uh, he also just seems better on turf. They didn't have him sprinting uh, on the main track. That wasn't his his game. And 12 to 1 morning line trying to take a flyer here. Hey, why not? I mean, the races on the turf that he's run have been a bit tougher uh, than he's going to fa uh, face this afternoon. He's coming in off the layoff. We haven't seen him since last October. Yep. Uh, and uh, he's had plenty of decent works. I mean, they don't jump off the page, but certainly good enough. And those are typical Mike Trombetta works. You don't typically see a trombetta horse work down there in 59 and change exactly 102s 101 and change are the those are his type of works that's the way he likes his horses working and it's been uh you know successful for him but uh look gonna be up against it but hey uh, go for it why not uh and the weight's getting taken off as well a little bit of a, yeah getting a very light 109 uh so uh, take a shot why not and uh fresh horse should be able to handle the turf without any issue. Yeah, and I always like it. the weight coming off on the longer distances tend to have a little bit more of an impact oh than yeah. just over the sprinting distances. So I'm just coming up with a couple of angles and maybe a price play to come home. But you have the number 10 on top in here, which is Gandalf for Jane Sibeli, Frugal Lynch. He closed really, really well and nearly got the win at the maiden 16 level at Delaware going a mile. Has kept his figures kind of around that 55-50 in his last couple of two. Uh, I'm just hoping he's going to show that same willingness here, but I give him a big chance having uh, been third. Yeah, I, I like the move here uh, that Jane Savilli uh, has uh, done. He ran on July 15th off of a bit of a layoff. Yep. Big race, uh, lifetime best race, as a matter of fact. Only got beat three quarters of length at this uh, maiden $16,000 level. Gives him a little bit of time. Comes back with three very productive works uh, since that race on July 15th. Comes back at the maiden 16 level. So we're second off of a layoff. Gets a good outside draw under F uh, Fergal L Lynch. And look, uh, Fergal and Jane, you know, they're very, very good with limited starters. They're at 50% yeah. over the last two years everywhere. 50% right here at uh, Laurel Park. Uh, I like the draw. I like the second off the layoff, and I like a little bit of a break. So yeah, I'm going to take uh, Gandolfo on top. The here stats in are in your favor for sure when it sure. comes to the Sibeli sure. and Lynch team. Race number six, mile and 16 on the turf again. Optional claimer starter allowance. And we do also have a video spotlight there, which is on the number six, Cartano for Efren Loza Jr. Daniel Centeno rides here. Look, this horse got the perfect box trip and went in the clear. He just took over. It kind of made me think, how strong is this field behind him? Kind of looks it up, wasn't outstandingly strong. And that kind of shows here the way he wins. Yeah, you're, you're, when you're against a, a less than stellar field, you're supposed to win like that. But he did the job. But look, th this is a horse who's done the job every time he's been led over there. He's not run a bad race. He's seven for seven on the board with two wins on the grass he shows up every time he's run back to back 80 plus buyers and he shows another uh, 80 plus by 81 uh, back in a little stake at uh, Gulfstream Park in early May so he shows up and uh, you know he's beaten his competition he's run to his competition yep. I think he could be good enough here this afternoon I think he's strictly the one to beat for sure 
Well, I disagree there. Oh, I good. have him in third. I think Real Factor is a horse to go with here. He comes from that Cape Henelope Stakes at Delaware. Uh, definitely an easier group here than the Stakes Company that he kept last time. A strong cutback as well from the mile and a half uh, to the mile and 16 distance here. But he's shown plenty of speed to say that that works right up his alley. He's run over it plenty of time. He had a month to get over that 82 buyer. That isn't even his career best. He's run a 90 buyer in the past. And uh, I loved his battle in that stage. Really, really tried gaming. I wasn't able to hold off uh, Ocean's map, but I thought it was a very tenacious effort. Tenacious. He's tenacious in getting beat. Uh, <laughs> look, he's a good form. <laughs> hey, there's, there's, he's a good form. He's still looking for his first win of 2021. He's still looking for his first win on the grass. He's 0 for 17 on the turf. He likes to run second. He runs good numbers. I just question his desire to steal the deal. I use him, uh, but when you're zero set for 17 on the turf, I, I can't. Um, I can't run to the 18. He's gonna win today. I, I look. I'm not rooting against today. you. I'm not. Real, I'd be happy to be wrong. <laughs> I'll be happy. I'll be more happy to be right, but I'll be happy to be wrong. I don't mind me. This is a, a really interesting <laughs> race. Actually, looking forward to race number six. Takafumi is in there as well. Takafumi, Jose Camillo, I like that one a bit. Really like him. Uh, heavily pressured the leader from early on uh, at Monmouth that day. The leader ended up backing up completely. Takafumi was holding on. Couldn't hold off a, a closer there in Mosh, if I say that correctly. Uh, but Mosh then went on to run in the grade three Saranac and ran an 81 buyer. So clearly not a bad horse. And, and by rights, Takafumi we might be getting a little class relief here in this non winners of three for for 25,000 or whatever the number is here this afternoon for uh, 35,000. Uh, you know, he's run two consecutive first level allowance conditions at Mammoth. He backed up a 76 and backed that up with a 78 on the 15th of uh, August. You know, uh, getting back against, you know, condition winners. Uh, it might be enough to put him over the top and gets Joey and Pimentel this afternoon. Look, this is a spread race for me because let's talk about the number two, Chow, Safi Joseph yeah. Jr. In I mean, any other race, he would be the heavy favorite in here. Sure. Uh, Safi Joseph was coming over. Um, interesting sort of background on this was from what I read into it. Has been working at Saratoga. Never ran there, though. Was ran last time out seen at, at Gulfstream Park where he won't wonder if he maybe had a possible small setback and also interesting that he's not now waiting for Belmont to start again which I do believe is not too long from now but taking him over here well I'm sure Safi spent most of his uh, uh, time up at Saratoga and maybe this is a horse he just wanted to keep close maybe having no no intentions of running him at Saratoga uh, at all, but has been working well mm -hmm. up there at the spa. We haven't seen him for over three months, uh, but he returns. Uh, his last race was a win at a similar level where he fired a lifetime best race, you know, and, and Safi's good off these type of layoffs. And, uh, you know, he's, you know, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I agree with you. I mean, in any other race or at least he, this horse would probably be favorite, but yeah, this race does come up a little a little salty, a little wide open all around. This race is coming up very, very tough. A race number seven, first level allowance for three-year-olds and up six furlong the distance here. And well, my best bet of the day is in here. The number seven, my my girl for Robbie Bills, Forrest Bush, like I highlighted, she was supposed to run yesterday. They decided not to go there, but go here and find a bit of an easier spot for her. Now, wasn't away as quickly in the Miss Disco. We were kind of this. We were discussing yeah. this horse uh, this morning because you know she had been breaking quite nicely. But you said she has done it in the past. I'm hoping today she can break uh, on top. I don't think she's she's not going to lead. I, I love for her to just sit that perfect sort of well. outside stalking position because she wins doing that. Yeah, who's more dangerous uh, from an outside draw than Forrest Boyce? And she's very very good from out there. She understands what's going down on the inside of her. So this this works well for my my girl, even if she just gets that, that way a little tardy, yeah. which uh, hopefully doesn't happen because she'd gone three races where she'd gotten away well and got away a little slow in her last uh, last start. So the break is going to be very, very important. She's already won this race at the state bred level. Uh, so maybe she come back and get the job done today. I like her. I think I have her in my exact. Uh, I went elsewhere to six uh, Bucky's Charm, three to on one line. Uh, yep, gets uh, Charlie Marquez, and look, two dismal tries on the grass this year. There's no doubt about that, but turning back, getting back to the main uh, track and sprinting, sharp work. Look at that work on September 6th, one a minute, a minute and two-fifths, and uh, you look at her form, and she's got some good races on the main track uh, against uh, 
arguably tougher horses. Yeah, no, she's been campaigned at, at Stakes Company. However, I think My My Girl's going to have to jump on Bucky's Charm, and Bucky's Charm's going to absolutely have to produce her best finish to be able to co uh, to collar the filly on her outside. But I have her in my exacta, like you said, getting back to that main track. That is what she likes to do. She has been campaigned against tougher fillies. But then again, My My Girl, uh, she was in the wide country zone. I didn't do that well. I just feel like she's doing well and moving along. But I, I agree with you here. I think Bucky's Charm certainly is capable of getting back maybe to those 70 by and then my my girl definitely also has to produce her best race to win here i feel these two fillies are very closely matched i'm hoping my my girl is going to get the job done how about pretty edgy how about we haven't seen edgy? her in a while in the winner's circle we haven't but look uh, she's got two races from pimlico that really really stick out for me two back that was a nice race where she lay, uh, laid off the pace she only gets speed a uh, length and a quarter and on May 20th at Pimco, that was a big race. She gets beat a nose to a next out winner in Sousa and just love the way she did it. I mean, look, she, we've got speed, a little bit of speed, it appears, toward the inside with Moon Safe. Gonna probably have to use what she has. And then maybe some speed to the outside with My My Girl. It could set up uh, perfectly for Pretty Edgy and uh, Javion Toledo here. And keep in mind that all three of her lifetime starts have come right here at Laurel Park when she gets led from Barn 11 right down here and that could make a big difference some horses don't like traveling and absolutely love walking from their barn and then yep. just doing what they do in the mornings but under a little bit more pressure let's uh finish things off with race number eight and hopefully with a winner maiden claimers phillies ms three four and five year old were sprinting on the turf here and tim you landed on the horse that i actually didn't end up using miss boskanovich for tim keith now leave tim keith out uh, at my own peril because he did win the first race of the meet I'm going to draw a line through that last race. My concern is Forrest Boyce went elsewhere, but I think we're going to get to that horse also. I think we need to. But look, at, I think she's getting what she wants. She's by Sky Mesa out of a smart strike mare. The dam was unraced. The second dam, however, was a multiple graded stakes place mare. She won 7 of 16. She won $560,000. And she was second and third in two graded stakes. Uh, good, strong races on the grass. So I think this could work for Miss uh, Bostanovich this Bostanovich. afternoon. Bostanovich. I think. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, we'll wait for Dave Rodman. He he always has he always has it. We're just call her, gonna call her Miss B for now. Uh, Miss B. Uh, she's come ba coming back here. Uh, she, we haven't seen her since July 18th. She's got three uh, decent works since that so i'm going to give this one a shot 10 to 1 on the line yeah but you're right uh forest boys goes on the first or we can talk about her now yeah. we'll get through the others in a second tim key sends out this uh three-year-old by great notion drawn on the outside we've always said better draw for a firster than on the rail a better draw for a firster and a very good draw for uh forest uh, i have two attractions to this horse uh first of all forest gets off the other one to ride this one whether it was by choice or maneuvering, I'm not sure. Uh, but this is a horse that's a by great notion, and she has turf pedigree. Her mare, uh, her dam, all three of her lifetime wins came on the grass. Uh, so she's got turf underneath her. I'm not sure if Force has been working this one in the morning or not, but she mm -hmm. comes in here uh, with some decent works. And look at that August 19th work, 47 and 4 on the main track. She worked 49 and 1 on the 29th of August on the turf course here at Laurel Park. And what you have to understand about the works at, uh, on the turf at Laurel Park is the dogs are set pretty far out. So the times yeah. uh, you work a half mile and 50 or better here at Laurel Park on the turf, you're doing something. So I think that was a big work also. So uh, I had to use a watch me disappear up underneath. Yeah, I used the number two away to return as my top choice here for Michael Stidham. Charlie Marquez, she ran on both occasions at Arlington Park, but has been preparing at Fair Hill uh, ever after. And she's just run two solid figures. Uh, debut was made on the turf track, sprinting for the five. I think she was just a little bit outpaced that day. Uh, she wasn't as close as I might have would have liked to see. Then she showed her speed uh, going along on the main track. I thought it was interesting that the Stidham Bond decides to go back to the turf, which is what they did in the first place. And the speed figures hold up here. And I'm hoping that she continue that upward curve. Well, by Go Sapper, out of the big brown mare, she didn't run poorly in debut at Arlington Park. That was a maiden special weight event. 
Maybe getting a little relief here. Maybe yeah, we're going to see. We're going to see how they. Are yeah, they're up pretty they're strong. they're coming up pretty strong. Probably yeah. comparable mm. uh, race here. Went to the lead while going long on the main track in her last start on July 16th, and then comes in here with some good drills up there at uh, Fair Hill. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, Michael Stidham is very very tough with these types. 26 percent when going for maiden special weight uh, to maiden claiming route to sprint strong. This type of layoff strong. These horses show up. And sometimes it's just a fact, you know, you look at some horses and, it, and sometimes it, it does come down to who's training the horse and, and who has success uh, with these, uh, these type of horses. And even if you look at a horse that might look a little bit better on paper with their form and then you, you look at the connection, you go, well, you know, this, this guy's tough. And, and at the end of the day, yeah. the, this guy's tough with these types. Absolutely. And uh, that will do us for us this morning. But me, Tim, and Callie will all be back this afternoon to hopefully try and figure out race eight for you because this is not an easy one to finish uh, off with. And, of course, it is included in that late pick five, rainbow pick six, in my late pick four. So uh, let's hope that we are right. And next up will be Dave Rodman with all the scratches and changes. Good luck.